Hello, all my crafty friends. Welcome to Lama's Creations DIY. Let's start crafting. Today's craft is in part of Heidi Sonbull's Summer DIY Challenge. The rules are simple. That's all you have to follow. If you've ever not seen Heidi's channel, please go over and check her out. She is wonderful. Her voice just keeps you calm. She is actually the very first DIY crafter that I have ever watched when I first started on YouTube watching crafts. I will have her channel along with the playlist linked down in my description box. Please don't forget to go and check them all out. So on today's video we are going to need two pieces of wood cut with a triangle and a hole in the center. They're seven and a quarter inches wide by ten and seven eighths. They're going to be the front and the back, and there's a one and a quarter inch hole. We are going to need another two pieces, which are going to be the sides. They're seven and a quarter inches by four and a quarter. Then we'll need another two pieces, which will be the roofs. Roofs, the roof, five and a half inches by eight inches. And then you'll need a bottom piece which is seven and a half by nine and a half. Yes, it's cut a little crooked, but no worries to that. I also cut another little bottom piece, which was six by eight inches, because I realized at the end I needed it. And then I have this piece, it comes from a wheelbarrow, it's part of its handle, and I thought, hey, I can use this. It's 22 inches long by about one and three quarters inches wide. I had to cut off the top there because it was all pretty rigid and whatnot, but I give it a nice little cut. First, what we're going to do is we're going to secure the bottom piece here to the handle from the wheelbarrow. I figured instead of throwing the handle out, we can use it for something. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill a hole into the handle. And then I also pre-drill a hole into the bottom piece. But first, before doing that, I grab my ruler and I mark an X from corner to corner so I can find the middle. I didn't want this to be wonky and offset, so I, this is the way I did it. Found the middle and pre-drilled my hole. Then, taking some wood glue, I put a bunch on the handle end and then I take a screw and I screw that bottom piece down. If you're new here I would like to say welcome and thank you for joining us. If you're a returning subscriber, hello again I'm so glad you came back. I do all kinds of DIY crafts anything DIY from trash to treasure I use a lot of wood I take things and make them new again all sorts of crafts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build the, the house. And what we're making is a birdhouse. So we're going to take the front piece with the hole and we're going to glue the two sides onto, this, onto the sides, obviously. And then what I do after that is I pre-drill some holes and then I screw them down. I first tried using staples. It didn't work. Then I tried using a nail and hammer. The wood was too strong, so in the end, I pre-drilled holes and used screws. Holds a lot better. I'd like to ask all you guys to stick around until the end. There's a little snippet video asking you guys for some help and some advice on something that I'm trying to figure out and trying to do. So please, watch the end, watch that little video, and I'd love to hear your comments at the end. Now what I'm doing is I'm pre-drilling my holes. I do three on each side and then I do the same thing on the back end. I put the back piece with the triangle on the back and I pre-drill my holes and screw them in. I'm once again sitting outside on this beautiful, beautiful sunny day. So if you hear birds and stuff, that is why. 
Now we're going to attach the roof. I thought I was recording when I did the first part of the roof, but I wasn't. So I hit record and did it again. Pre-drilling some holes again. I do the exact same thing. Pre-drilling holes, add the wood glue, put in my screws. There's a few where I had to pre-drill the hole a couple times because I kept missing, but I'm not too worried about those holes because you'll see we're covering them up. Now it's time to paint. Checking it all over, making sure everything is good. Taking my brush that I have wrapped up in a plastic bag. Now you're probably wondering why I wrapped it in the bag. If your paintbrush is wet enough, you just make sure it's wet. Wrap it tightly in a bag or some people will use a glove, like a latex glove that they're using to paint with or some kind of plastic, you wrap it up and it'll keep it soft and wet and then you can continue reusing it. Especially if you're working with a paint all the time, you don't want to continuously wash the brush. It's a good way to save it and not have to use many brushes. And now I'm painting the roof brown. The white is just for a base coat. The brown is because what we're going to do next, I didn't want uh, the color to show through I wanted it kind of to match if it happened to show through what we put on so that's why I painted it brown getting all the edges and I get all underneath as well now taking these shims I cut them into about an inch and a half pieces um, just using my snips here I just cut some I had to break by hand because they were a little thick and my hands were getting sore but I cut about 84 of them. Now taking these little pieces, we're going to shingle the roof with them. Basically like that. What I do is I put a strip of wood glue down. And for the first set, I just use hot glue on the edge because it's got that wood glue to stick on. But after this first row is done, I put another strip of wood glue and then each piece I put wood glue and hot glue on it so it gives me that fast hold so I can continue working and then the wood glue will give me a long time hold. And here I'm showing you the next set. I don't show you the entire roof. That would be kind of boring. I do show you how I finish the tops. I continue doing this until the whole side is done and here I'm showing you how I am doing at the top. Once again my wood glue and then it's basically going to sit down like that kind of even with the other side of the roof the other little part where it comes up wood glue and hot glue and I press it down into place and then I'll show you again how to do the other side how I did the other side of the roof to match up with this side. Sorry if you hear me blowing quite often. I have a bug that keeps bugging me. <laughs> I'm blowing him away. <laughs> and here's how I'm showing you. I'm just butting it up against the other shim that is sitting there. So it kind of meets the two together and gives it that peak. And then there's no gap in between. Now, taking this gel stain by Minwax, it's Brazilian Wedwood. I first tried with a sponge brush, didn't like how it was going on. So then I use a nice clean rag and I apply this gel stain all over the white parts of the house. You'll see I have sticks there. I had another idea. I was going to cut all these sticks and glue them to the house after all this brown because the white was showing through. So I was going to paint it brown or stain it brown. And then I was going to glue all these branches onto the house. 
don't worry no tree was harmed in the making of this video these were all sticks that were on the ground but then you'll see I changed my mind because after this dried I kind of liked it kind of gave it that wood look but you'll see what I do to give it a little more pizzazz a little more darker in color but I also stain the shims in this same color just applying it with the sponge brush and wiping it off with a rag now instead of using those sticks this is what I'm going to do I take some black paint put it into a little cup and I add a bunch of water to make it like a stain and then obviously I mix it together and then taking a clean rag I lightly go over it looks like a lot at first but as you rub it in it goes away I lightly go over the entire piece darkening up that brown and darkening up the, the wood and stuff and I really really love how it turned out so that's why I didn't do the sticks I then take a small paintbrush just a cheap little plastic paintbrush and I use the gel stain and where the roof meets the birdhouse where it's all white I fill all that in with the gel stain so that white isn't showing and then I also do underneath the shims on the roof so all the colors kind of match together now this is the other piece that I cut it's six by eight we're going to glue that to the bottom so then that way we have another piece that'll glue to and screw to the other bottom so taking that I use my wood glue and some hot glue in some places and I adhere it to the bottom of this birdhouse Now we're going to stick it to that and again using my wood glue and some hot glue I adhere it to the base with the wheelbarrow handle to that and then you'll also see me I add in screws to, to the four corners to hold it down even better a little more security if you haven't done so yet please hit that subscribe button like this video and don't forget the notifications bell so you can find out when I upload all my other videos now it's time to add the little perch and again just using some wood glue and hot glue I stick it right there in that little hole I'm just using a piece of branch that I originally cut figured it matched nicely Then I take it outside and I give it a good spray coat of this clear wood finish just to protect it when it's outside because it is outdoors. And there it is set up. It was pretty windy that day when I was recording it, but I absolutely love it. I've always wanted to make a birdhouse and here I did. It's really nice. Let me know what you think down in the comments. What colors would you choose? How would you make it up if you were to make this? Now on to the little bit that I need your guys help with. All right, friends of mine, I need some suggestions. This is my coffee corner and it's a little bland. I need to do something with it. I was thinking maybe on, sorry, I'm trying to hold this and move my hand at the same time. I was thinking on maybe making a tray for the whitener coffee and sugar and stuff and corralling them together and maybe changing the jars out to clear so you could see what's in them and then I don't know making a little shelf or something over here to put some coffee mugs on and maybe a nice sign that their teapot is just decoration because I like it it's red I do have another kettle but it's a electric one that you plug in and it has a base and stuff I can pull that out but it could also be just stored away we don't drink a lot of tea often or when we do it's usually in the winter 
And I also have this little thing that can go over there, a little scenty. Usually those silverware and stuff, utensils and whatnot, go over in this area too. But I've moved them on the other side. That's another project coming. I really don't. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. But if anybody has any suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments section down below. Please, anything. These are the colors I'm working with. If you can see them properly. Kind of like browns and grays and beiges. My units are like uh, a dark gun ham, gun, gun, gun metal ish with <laughs> chrome. Same with the stove and the fridge on the other side over there. But if anybody has any ideas, I would absolutely love to hear them. Thanks. Bye. I'd like to thank everybody for watching and following through to the end. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that big thumbs up, and don't forget that notification bell. And if you've done so already, I absolutely thank you so very much. It sure does help my channel out a lot. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thursday, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!